Hey everyone, I'm Todd Wayne along with Ronnie Heelan. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Paranomaly Podcast. Coming up on this episode of Paranomaly, we're talking with Kevin Audi. Now, Kevin has actively investigated paranormal hotspots all over America for the past 17 years. And when he isn't researching new and intriguing haunts, he works as the director and of production for Bluegrass Studios. Now, Kevin is a producer and investigator with the series Haunted Discoveries and a field investigator with the American Paranormal Research Association. Now, Kevin has previously worked as a deputy sheriff, and he was an assistant coroner in Missouri. He implements his law enforcement training in each case he works, consistently searching for practical explanations into reported phenomena while keeping an open mind. So grab yourself a drink and a snack, turn the lights off on the way by, find yourself a nice comfy spot, and enjoy this episode, Paranomaly. (laughs) Stay with us, folks. You guys getting any weather up there? Uh, it's um, it's not bad. It's pretty pretty nice right now. Yeah, it's, it's been a nice day. I think eighty three today. Yeah, but we have gotten uh, the other day. It really come down. We had a ton of rain, wind. But for me, a rainy day is the best day. Say because I'm weird. Rainy days are fine. We just had an alert come across. We're under severe thunderstorm warning. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no! See, it's scary in Louisville. You know, right after I left and came back up to Pennsylvania, y'all had a tornado and in, in my neighborhood <laughs> uh, it it's, crazy. Been, it's been a crazy summer here yeah it has lots of weird weather but it seems like a lot of it it splits and goes north and south of us and doesn't really hit us that much yeah well that's good that's a good thing <laughs> that's right You're that's protected. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> so kevin how are you today doing well doing well good good now Tell us a little bit about yourself so our listeners can hear what it is that you do and who you are and all that good stuff. Oh, goodness. How far back do you want me to go? (laughs) Well, just go back as far as you want to. (laughs) I was born on it. That's right. (laughs) I uh, I grew up in Missouri, and I worked for um, a sheriff's department there. I was a deputy sheriff and uh, assistant coroner. Nice. Um, I also did uh, court security for the U.S. federal courts. And wow. then in 2009, I moved to L.A. I uh, had some friends out there. So I actually moved out there to do um, personal fitness training. <clears throat> but backtrack a little bit. While I was on the sheriff's department, I also started doing some side work for a private investigator. And him and his wife had a uh, paranormal group. And we got to talking about it one day because that's kind of stuff I've always been interested in. And they invited me on an investigation and uh, went and did that. And that's when I got hooked. Yep. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. And uh, and being law enforcement, I mean, you're going to have, you know, lots of questions. You're going to figure it out. Exactly. And that's kind of, you know, I like that I have that background because that helps me in investigating. Because it's kind of investigating to me is kind of like putting together, you know, a court case in a way. Yeah. And I kind of try to look at investigating from, say, a defense attorney's point of view where they could say, you know, you catch a piece of evidence and they're like, well, oh, that's easy. It's just it's just this. OK, I see what you're saying. And yes, it could be. This is why it's not. Right. And then I go into, you know, say, you know, like, say you catch a shadow. Oh, that's just somebody walk by a walk by a light. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Could be. This is why it's not that. Right. And then lay all that out. Yeah. You know, try to debunk as much as possible exactly. before jumping to the conclusion that, oh, God, this is unexplained. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. But, uh, but no, after I moved to L.A., um, I started investigating out there for a while and um, actually met Brandon about a year after I moved out there. And um, we've been friends kind of ever since. And uh, 2018, I took a full-time position with a production company in Kentucky. Uh, Moved from L.A. to here. Um, We do a lot of movies for like Lifetime, that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, I had um, brought up Brandon's name and some of his projects to them. And, uh, you know, one of the projects that 
Brandon had was Haunted Discoveries. And so talking with him and Mustafa, we kind of put together this whole ordeal and um, it kind of took off from there. And we've filmed three seasons of it so far. Um, Season one is getting ready to start airing October 6th on TNE. Yay. Which is actually a Canadian company. Yeah, it's a Canadian company. So are we yeah. going to be able to get that here? You, It will eventually be here. We're actually working on some domestic uh, deals now as well. But uh, that's the first one that we're able to announce right now. Okay, cool. Not, not did yes, you, it, will be, it will be coming. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> did, you, did you go to school for like uh, film and, and things like that? Yeah, so I actually uh, ended up going to the Los Angeles Film School in Hollywood. And uh, graduated with honors there in two thousand eleven. Awesome. Yeah, that's that that's is a, that, that yeah. is awesome. I want to be like in one of his cheesy little Christmas movies or something. You know, I love them. <laughs> They're out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Christmas movies. She call her. She wants to do I one. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so now, when you uh, you got out of film school, you uh, did some projects, correct? And then you met. Correct. Then you met uh, Brandon. Yes. And now you okay. guys are doing uh, this haunted discoveries. Now, what? Correct. Explain what haunted discoveries is. So the difference with haunted discoveries: one, we go deep into the historical uh, aspects of locations, to where in the episode the location is actually the main character. Good. Oh. Awesome. We Very go good. through, we uh, have a great historian, uh, Malia Molino. She's our researcher. And everything that we come up with the locations, we back up with data. We back up with you know records. Um, we'll find articles. We like to back up the true facts about locations. Yeah. There's some places that's kind of well known that we've debunked some stuff and found out some stuff that previously wasn't known. Cool. <laughs> but, that's uh, awesome. So we do that, and we we don't use a lot of the traditional paranormal equipment. Um, we're getting deeper into like relating paranormal equipment with, say, environmental conditions and stuff like that. We had um, Dr. Harry Clore join us, who is a, a world-renowned scientist, and he really helps us with um, looking at our evidence and stuff like that and different experiments that we do to get us out of pseudoscience and make sure that we're actually collecting legitimate data that can be analyzed to help kind of further the field in paranormal research. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that. So we're big into data collecting and, you know, having stuff analyzed by a third party, uh, looked at. And over these last three seasons, we have, we've caught some amazing things. (laughs) Good, That's cool. I'm good. really looking forward to this, to coming on TV. I've been waiting since I met you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, that that's one of the big reasons that we wanted to have you on and, and Brandon, because we really like where the show is going. We, we like, you know, the most, the most people see on a, on a ghost adventures or something, they see a lot of, I, I, don't, I don't want to say faked evidence because, I mean, I'm sure they do get some every now and again. But it's like back-to-back evidence, and they just don't understand what it takes. You know, they could have been there for, a, you know, two days before they got anything. Right, right, right. And I can I can tell you from being there, I have, you know, I will stand 100% behind anything that you see come out in our episodes Everything and every episode is 100% legit unfolding as you see it on screen. So it's not like we pre-found stuff and then went and did it. It's like stuff was unfolding as you will see it in the episode. Wow. Right. Yes. Awesome. That's, that, that is awesome. You know, so like the emotions you see people have and stuff like that are actual in the moment oh, okay. of it happening. Cool. Awesome. So what was like the, what was like the big thing for this show to be made like what 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 spurred this this whole thing because i mean like you can you can watch there's many uh paranormal things out there and some are just a little way over the top for me i mean uh, one of the things i mean you watch a lot of the shows on you know current tv and a lot of them are just the exact same thing yes yes over and over and over again yeah over and over the same thing and 
you know, we wanted to get past that. We wanted to push past that and do something, something new, something fresh. Good. Yeah. And that's that's why we really get into the history, the documenting, you know, data and stuff like that and have it analyzed and, you know, really trying to push the field forward instead of just, it's not, we don't just go into locations because we hear they're haunted or whatever. We actually want to find locations that have a story to be told. Yes. Yes. And tell that story. Yes. That's awesome. And that's why it's so incredibly important about uh, the history of a place. Because yeah. there is a lot of um, there is a lot of embellishment that we've noticed at a lot of places. And and it completely takes away from the real story of a place. And honestly, when you start doing and digging into the history deep in these places, the truth is a lot crazier than the stories that are made up. I bet. Yes. Yeah, I can definitely, I can believe that some of them are <laughs> extremely bad. <laughs> can you say some of the, some of your favorite ones that you've visited during these three, three seasons? Oh, goodness. Location wise. Um, well, season, season one, we did a lot of places that weren't as well known. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of hit a lot on uh, bed and breakfasts. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. One of my favorite ones was probably Talbot Tavern in Bardstown, Kentucky. Yeah. It's, um, one of the oldest bourbon bars, you know, still in operation. Yeah. And, you know, you can rent rooms and you can spend the night there. You can eat at the restaurant. Yeah. Isn't it? That's bourbon. where we met, right? I believe so. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. But that's. That was one of my favorite places. Um, right next door to Talbot is a place called the Jailer's Inn. Um, it's an old jail, which is also a bed and breakfast. And there used to be a tunnel that ran from the Talbot to the Jailer's Inn, which the tunnel's still there. It's sealed now, but it, it is still there. Yeah, and it runs underneath some of the houses, too, on the, the main uh-huh. street there, too. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. I can't <laughs> wait to see that episode. That's so so awesome. what was the tunnels? Was that like prohibition stuff? Um, It was for... Uh, kind of moving in. They had moved inmates and stuff. They used to have some inmates in the basement of Talbot at one time. Okay, <clears throat> but um, it's it's an interesting place, and uh, it's a fun place to stay. Yeah, it, t- it sounds like yeah. it, and the food's really good too. And that's why I brought <laughs> up the tunnels because a lot, you know a lot of times tunnels was like to sh- to get beer and mm-hmm. whiskeys back and forth. That's why I was I was just curious. And then, like, um, Louisville Bourbon Inn and Old Louisville, another great bed and breakfast that we stayed at. Um, Hall Place, which was in, um, oh, I'm blanking on the town at the moment, but uh, Hall Place Bed and Breakfast. And then we stayed at another one called the Grand Victorian Inn, which is a bed and breakfast. And they're all great places to stay, great great people running them. Um, just a lot of fun. So if you get yeah. a chance, stay at any of those. Yeah, well, as soon as I see the show, then I'm going to be like, okay, we're going to stay here. We're gonna stay here. <laughs> <laughs> just make, just make, a, make a trip out of it. Make a big circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you guys, you wanted to do something different so than what all the rest of the, the things are doing. So that's what you guys, that was the plan, right? That was, correct. you know, to get, you wanted to get everybody, this is what, how it really is yeah to get out of pseudoscience and actually do some investigating yeah right now as far as equipment now i don't need to know uh the secret stuff that you was using but like what would be the difference between what you use and what a normal investigator would use well i mean a lot of the stuff that you know you can just buy on the internet or whatever a lot of it is easily manipulated sure um, you can set it off from cell phones. You can set it off by walkie talkies. You can, you know, we found out that when you key a walkie, it'll also set off a motion detector. Yes. So that's kind of stuff you need to watch out for. One of our biggest pieces of equipment that we utilized was the EMCCD camera. Okay. The scientific camera that detects photon events. All right. And we're starting to associate photon events with um, claims of paranormal activity as well. Okay, and that's you know that's good because you know I I'm a fan of the FLIR tech you know the mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm a fan of those because it's something that 
Is it something that we're not looking at, the uh, different spectrums, things like that? Exactly. Yeah, you need to be be able to see into those other spectrums to kind of, you know, see things that we can't see with our naked eyes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Continue on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're striving for with the show. And um, season two, we had some great locations. We had a few. A little bit more known locations like Octagon Hall and stuff like that, which is a phenomenal place. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> but um, yeah, we kind of been making our rounds, and uh, we hit, like I said, a lot of unknown places and a few known places, and just trying to figure out if everything around here is somewhat connected. Yeah, that would be cool. Yes, that would be cool. That would be. Yes. That would be a book. Because we've gone <laughs> done a lot in Kentucky, which you know sits on top of Mammoth Cave. Yeah which is one of the biggest cave systems in the U.S., <clears throat> full of, uh, you know, limestone, calcite, yep. and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, so, I was just yeah. going to say, a lot, of, a lot of different minerals and yeah. stuff in there. There's a lot of activity in different places in Kentucky and um, Tennessee. Yeah, and then we also look into, like, the Kentucky Anomaly, which is um, what NASA had deemed it, I believe it was in the 80s, that there is a area over southern Kentucky that holds a higher geomagnetic pool than like anywhere else in the U.S. except for like one other place. I think it was Sedona, hmm, Arizona. Interesting. Wow. <clears throat> but we figure, you know, you combine a high gravitational pull and the calcite and limestone in the caves, and you're mixing up some stuff there to make for some good activity. Yeah, yes, for real. Yes, absolutely. And then with Kentucky's history altogether, I mean, just keeps adding up. Yeah, see, that's what I like when you can do that and investigate and find all these scientific reasons why yes. this is happening and that is happening. So, yeah, I'm yeah, because you know I'm not a huge fan of like K two meters and mel meters and whatever. No, you know no, what I mean. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just not. K twos are so touchy and sensitive. Uh, I mean, if I I would I could probably forget the K two and just go with the mel meter and be a little bit more. But I I tend to think of like solar flares and things too that happened five hours ago and it's just now hitting the earth. Yeah. So those type of things, those, uh, uh, what, what would that be? The, uh, I don't want to say earthly, it's not earthly. It's, uh, environmental. So you get yes. a lot of environmental things and that's the things that really, fascinate me you know is is that mel is that that uh rem pod or something is it going off because of a solar flare that's now just hitting us or you know what could it be yeah so we also like to try to look into um environmental conditions a lot because it seems like you know in conjunction with activity it seems like we always end up with um fluctuations in barometric pressure yes I was just going to say barometric pressure would have a lot to do with stuff. So that's another thing that we're noticing uh, quite a bit and starting to document with a lot of the uh, a lot of the evidence that we've collected. Yes, because I mean, if it's if we've got a huge storm coming and compile that with with uh, oh who knows it could be minerals and rocks and all this stuff you compile all that together and it could really be some kind of a. a magnet for paranormal investigations i think so too and another thing i've noticed um especially in the first season that we tend to have a lot of activity on locations that are really close to train tracks oh oh interesting i love train so, tracks too i don't know if like between like running water in the rivers and under the ground and all that in combination with the friction made by the train on the tracks and stuff like that also, you know, kind of amps up activity. Yeah. yeah what, that's... Ki what kind of activity was happening? Um, we're getting everything from, you know, even starting to get pressure changes when trains pass by locations. Oh. Um, you know, you won't have anything pretty well most of the night. And as soon as a train passes by, it seems like stuff starts to amp up some. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And you know that could that could also change too, like you said about the waters. There's usually the the tracks run by streams and creeks and things like that. Mm -hmm. But you also have like uh, switch terminals too, the that are powered by lots of electric apparently that switches the track 
so that when a yeah. train's going to turn, so you have all that too that, that would coincide with that electricity. Yeah, it seems like it seems like it really energizes the air whenever trains come by. Yes, that's interesting. Very interesting. So I just one of the few things we've noticed. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I missed it. I said, I said just one of the few things that we've noticed. Oh, well, that's good because, you know, who thinks of that stuff? Right. Right. And that's why, you know, I'm big with when I used to investigate all the time, I did all residential and business locations. Mm-hmm. And you you have to pretty much be a carpenter. You have to be yeah. a, a contractor. You have to know how air conditioners work and heating systems and you have to know what's in the walls. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we've been to locations where people's like, Oh, people go in this room and they just, they start feeling all weird and stuff. We think something's in there. And then you walk in there and find out that, you know, it's hitting up in the thirties on a tri-filled meter, like 30 milligauss. And you're like, well, that's probably why people are feeling weird in here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, start looking into things like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of these old places, you know, if we use like the tripwire, some of the places we'd set it on the floor and we couldn't even use it because the EMF was just so high coming through the floor. Right, right. So what do you, what do you, what do you do in that situation? I mean, if something's just continuously going off, you know that there's something not right. So you would have to move that, apparently. We just won't use that piece of equipment. If it's not able to be used there and we can't depend on it to get a semi-accurate result, we won't, we won't use it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause it, it, we'll move on to something else. We'll, you know, video, audio, something like that. But if it's high EMF, we won't use any type of uh, EMF device. Right. Now, what about like uh, EVPs? What do you think of EVPs? Do you, do you think like, I, I think that's there, like the most credible piece of, <laughs> you know, if it's you and you're in a place all by yourself and, you know, you're asking questions and you get a child's laughing in there. I mean, it's like, where did, yeah. where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you know that is a, that it is a controlled session and you are not holding the recorder, you actually have it set down. Yes. Um, I find them more credible. If you're holding one, just slight bits of movement can sound exactly like an EVP. Yes, it can. And they're also very sensitive, so you got to pay attention and really mark, you know, any outside noises that you hear. <clears throat> um, myself personally, I like I like video. Yes, I like I like the visual. I like being able to see stuff, uh, see shadows. I mean, we've caught EVPs on the video cameras before and stuff like that. And, but uh, yeah, EVPs are some of them can be interesting, especially if they correlate with the location that you're at. And stuff that may be going on. Right. Yeah, because I've always been fascinated with, with EVPs because I, I I worked alone for the longest time in these doing the residentials. And uh, especially businesses, you, you're in there. There's not one soul around. They, you have the place to yourself and you're pulling these voices out of thin air and it's like, hmm, <laughs> where are they coming from? <laughs> and we know, we all know like sound travels, but is it, right. does it really travel that far? I mean, how far does sound actually travel? You know what I mean? But also, I mean, we've been places to where, you know, we're doing an EVP session and, you know, people are outside talking and you can li- when listening to it back. You can distinguish their muffled sound and something that is spoken directly into the microphone. Yes. And that's, uh, I, I think a lot of people don't, they don't take that in consideration either. I, I, th- I think a lot of it is just like audio pareidolia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that's sure, exactly yeah. what I think. I think that people want it so badly that when they hear something they're like oh that, that was a ghost right there <laughs> and that's why we try to steer away from things like the spirit box and stuff like that yes and that's awesome and i'm glad that you're doing that it, it's this is spirit box great. ovulus yes well tell me about the obvious did you, you guys did you ever use one at a at a place no because it's just it's just throwing out phonetic stuff. it's throwing out words that's already been inputted into the device yes. yes it's it's using the database but couldn't it somehow I, I don't know couldn't couldn't a spirit somehow manipulate it and i don't know nothing about the ovulus i had one a long time ago and was like eh, i can't use it <laughs> so, I, i've never owned one yeah i it, just 
from everything I've seen with him, I don't find him to be a hundred percent credible. Um, especially when it's just picking words out of a database. Yes. Cause it could be too random and it could be, it could definitely be like coincidental that you say something and it spits out, uh, <laughs> a word. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There have been some pretty, some things that come up with them that you're like, Oh, that's interesting. But again, it's nothing that can be documented and analyzed. Yeah, that's correct. That is it's correct. just something that happens in the moment. You're like, Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Yes, because I have a clip of myself using my Ovilus that I had. I had the Ovilus, Ovilus X, and I went to a place where it was a lake, and there was a, a person that drowned there, and I was getting responses of drowning and the lake, and, and I was blown away. I was like, wow, you know, is this possible? <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> I still got the clip. I think that's the only one that I ever saved from way back in the day. And I'm like, this is kind of mind blowing right here, but I kind of put it on a back burner, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I can't sit here and say that stuff like that can't be legitimate and something can't happen like that. Right. But again, it's not something that we can look at and analyze that can really help further the field of paranormal research and, you know, trying to find proof of life after death or anything like that. Yeah. Exactly. And that, and that's, you know, that goes with it. I mean, a lot of apps that I see, um, especially a couple of newer ones, they have wordless banks. Um, those I'm kind of fascinated with. Uh, a necrometer is the one that I've, yeah. I've been really having some good luck with, but I mean, I can't, pin it down right now but it's mm -hmm. it's very fascinating how it's there's no words in it it's just phonetics and it i'm telling you whenever you start to pick up on whatever it is out there you hear regular words you're not mm -hmm. hearing you're not hearing just the phonetic anymore now it is going to words and it trips me out sometimes cuz it's like wait a minute is my brain just adding on to the rest of it but then I'll I'll play a video clip and someone will be like yeah you can hear that the whole way through but the beginning was gibberish so yeah. very interesting with that stuff cuz some people always say well how does a ghost from 1905 know how to work this type of electric equipment they've never seen it before <laughs> right like, yeah, that's Feel you, I understand. <laughs> yes, but it wouldn't be so much that they're trying to work the equipment. All they have to do is be able to grab a snippet of something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I would think anyway. I, I have, I'm, you know, <laughs> I. The reason I do this podcast is because I haven't been in the field for a while, and this keeps me in the loop. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, uh, I'm totally out of the loop on that. Now, there's uh, another one, uh, I th and I don't know if it's the Panasonic, I'm trying, I was just trying to look it up, but there's a, a digital recorder, it's like the holy grail of the paranormal community, in fact, they go for like up to $10,000, and it's it's like the D DDR or something or another, I don't know, but it, you see it a lot, like uh, Kindred Spirits uses it, uh, mm -hmm. they use it on um, Ghost Hunters, and, and I just... To me, whenever I hear it, it just kind of sounds like nothing. It it sounds like garbled. Yeah, I can't understand stuff. It. Is what it's, it's just like a brr, 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 and I'm like that is not. I would not voice. pay ten thousand dollars for that. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> no. <laughs> yeah, like that is not a voice. I don't know like, what we that could is. Go on a cruise. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the day, the day I would spend ten grand on a nineteen seventies recorder, yeah, right. <laughs> no. So let me ask this question: when you, when you was a cop, did you ever run into any paranormal stuff out in the field? I didn't really. I've I've went and looked for it. Um, I used to drive some of the back gravel roads, just kind of looking for things, uh, trying to find abandoned houses and stuff like that. And, yeah. But um, yeah, I never had any experiences on the road which kind of bummed me out yeah well could that be because you're you're conditioned as a police officer you're not really looking for that kind of stuff i mean you, even though oh, you, i was looking for that kind of stuff so even though <laughs> even though you was yeah i was just gonna say well that, that would make sense because now you are looking for it and yeah that's interesting that's very interesting because i know people that that have also been in the law enforcement and 
they have not experienced anything but was never looking. They would get calls to go to some place and they would chalk it up to whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so – and, and I, I can totally understand why. And some of my coworkers have had some reports of stuff, but um, unfortunately I never got those calls. Do you think would they would they report that in though? Would they say, "Hey, we went to this house and the walls were bleeding," or, or do you think they'd be like, <laughs> "No, be we're not saying nothing because you know <laughs> we're not going to end up in the psych ward"? <laughs> do you think do you think that's like an issue for for police officers now, or do you think that it, because it's so well known now and it's out in the open that if they would see something they can't explain, they'd be able to go to their sergeant or whatever and say, "Hey, look, this is what I seen," and this is. I don't know what it was, but I'm not crazy. Yeah, I think I think that would depend on the person and the location. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know if I'd want to report anything like that in like a Bible Belt place. You know? Oh no! You want to do that <laughs> yeah, completely south. understandable. Yeah, yeah. That, that could that could get you uh, shunned more ways than right? one. Right? They'll do an exorcism on <laughs> That's you. That's right. Big right. <laughs> yeah, we don't want your kind around here. <laughs> Power of Christ compels you. That's right. <laughs> You know, I, I've no, hey, I knew a friend. He went to New Orleans. He was a cop down there, and uh, I can't remember what parish he it's was called with. New Orleans. Whatever. I don't know. What, I don't know what parish he was with, but he he had all kinds of stuff happen. They would laugh at him. They'd be like, "Yeah, you know that this is <laughs> this is a place of voodoo and hoodoo. You know, you're you're going to run into all kinds of what stuff. What you do down there? <laughs> so, I'm just saying. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely way more open there. <laughs> So, how long have you been a paranormal investigator? I added it up the other day, and I think I'm right at like 17 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's a long time. Yeah, that's good. I, I didn't realize it had been that long until I started looking at the years, and I was like, holy cow. That's yeah. been that long ago? <laughs> yeah, and, and how, how much it's changed, you know, since, I mean, I started it back in, whew, man, my very first experience was back in the uh, 80s, early 80s. Before the interwebs. Yeah. And wow. then and then I, <laughs> uh, once I figured out what was going on, the, you know, the, it was, was something I couldn't explain. I had to try to look it up. And that was even more ridiculous because, you know, now you got to go to a library, try to find books on ghosts and hauntings and the property and yeah. all that. Yeah. It's, it's my first books about ghosts and hauntings that I remember having were the, um, Time Life Mystic Places of the Unknown books. Oh, wow. That, now you're going back. And I still have them. Just how <laughs> old are you, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I actually just turned I turned 45 this year. Wait, how old? 45 this year. You 45. lie like a rug. There's no way. <laughs> I thought yep. you was, I, seriously, I thought you was going to say 35. There's no I met you in person. You do not look 45. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't look at acted or feel it, so I'm going to keep it that way. You don't sound it, neither. <laughs> Same. Same. You, you sound younger. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. What are, you, what are we supposed to sound like? <laughs> right? I, I don't know. Right? <laughs> so, now, you, um, you, you've you been doing the paranormal investigating for, oh, what, 17 years, you said? Yes. And uh, where do you see yourself? Do you, do you want to? Is this going to be something that now you always do? You're going to keep keep your eye on the paranormal, or are you going to eventually branch to, or are you just going to let the universe decide? I mean, right now, um, you know, things are going well with the show. We have 32 episodes done. Um, I think once people see it, it's it's going to be a big hit. People yeah. are going to be super excited about it because yep. it is something different. Absolutely. Um, it's helping move forward, and hopefully um, – you know, we'll have many more to come after this. We're also doing a uh, Haunted Discoveries kind of spinoff series that we're going to start filming this September. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be uh, updating about that coming up in the near future. Cool. Well, yeah, I just can't wait for them to come out. And I hope that we, we do get to see them here in the U.S. Because, you know. Oh, you will. I've been looking forward to this since <laughs> I met y'all. And, it, you know, like I w- stayed with Denise and Ernie for a minute and that's all they talked about and I'm like yeah that, I'm did, ready for this come on let's do Do you it. do places like Waverly Hills? <laughs> we we did Waverly Hills in season 3. And now when when you do these cuz I know that you're very history 
oriented. When you go in there and you do the history, you're looking for the true stories of everything that like if a tour guide goes and says something, you want to you want to get to the facts. Right, I want to see the documents to back up that claim. Right. So it's like, it's like court present the evidence. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's good because yeah. you know uh, there is there is thought forms and we just did a show about thought forms and it's very fascinating mm-hmm. because you can actually manifest a entity. entity. Yes. And and <laughs> you and, it's, and it's and it's it's really playing havoc on paranormal investigators because now you have this entity that that people have fought into existence and it's, I'm, I'm laughing because um just just wait till you see our episode number two season one yep okay Oop, looking forward to that now yeah <laughs> yeah and, and it's so fascinating i mean i i i we watched the kindred spirits and i seen this episode me and her and i was like i was dumbfounded i yes. was blown away i was like wait a minute all this time even when i was young and really delving deep into the paranormal i didn't even think about thought forms mhm so then it's i had it's not something that's been very well thought of right and i had to start thinking okay so now i have to delve even farther into history to separate the fact and fiction, especially stories, because, you know, you tell one story and, you know, before long, a thousand people believe that story and they're and going to that location. It, yes. yes. Going to the location. They're asking questions for this spirit that really doesn't even, it, it wasn't even there. It's just someone it created, fought it. Yeah. So, then yeah, and, on, and on that note, I mean, you look at a lot of these places and all these towns, you know, that have that type of an activity that could be based off of a false claim yep. and how many, um, you know, ghost tours and stuff like that are going through there telling the same story over and over and over and over Absolutely. again. Absolutely, Yes. And does that help, you know, does that help keep this entity alive? It does. Yes. It, feeds you know, it. That feed it. Yeah, it, it may not be true, energy, but it's the yeah. legend. Exactly. And it's just constantly repeated in the loop day after day after yep. day. That's right. Amy and Adam went in and, um, changed the story up and, and created another whole backstory of something to try to change it to see if they could. It to was see an if experiment. they could bring it and, up. And, you know, they have Chip. Is it Chip Coffee? Yep. Is that his name? Yeah. He, they had him on there, and he literally picked up on what they made up and created together as a thought form. And I was like, whoa, man, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Pardon my French people. But... <laughs> But yeah, it's ever since then we've been like kind of obsessed with with this and with researching it because it's just so fascinating, you know. Yeah, because mm-hmm. people don't realize that they're they're if they create something at a haunted place to get people there, they're really creating a a, a thought form entity. They're, they're going to yeah. create something and. If I talked. Her name was uh, Crystal Compton. Yes, she she she's she, she's, a, she's a great person. She knows thought forms inside and out. She knows a lot of stuff. She's really awesome. But she was telling us, you know, these can be created and they can continue and continue and become their own yes. type of thing. And then you're really going to be in trouble because <laughs> it's like, now what do we do? You know, we created this, this monster entity yeah. and, we and it's d- different from a poltergeist too. She yeah. Said. So I can tell you, we have some stuff that you're going to dig then. Well, good. <laughs> Yay, good. I'm excited. <clears throat> Damn it. I can't wait. And there's some, there's some <laughs> stuff. I will tell you, there is some stuff in there that I would question and find hard to believe had I not personally been there and witnessed it in person. Oh, okay. Yeah, very cool. good. After I watch the episodes, I'm gonna be sending you messages. <laughs> I'm be like, "Yo, Kevin." <laughs> yeah, there's there's a couple things that I'm like, "You've got to be kidding me." Yeah, wow. that's awesome. You know, yeah. I know for 100 percent true that everything in these episodes. That's another good thing about our show and the way that we are doing it independently is we have complete creative control over the show. Good. Myself, Brandon, Mustafa, producers. Um, Brandon also directs it and edits it. So we're putting in there what we want to see, not what a network that has no interest in the paranormal thinks people want to see. Good. 
Right. You don't have people coming in and saying, hey, I'm going to need you to be more dramatic and <laughs> right. And blah, right. blah, blah. Because I, I hate that. That's what turns yep. me off on the shows is the people acting like idiots. Like, well, well, you're on an investigation. Why are you going to run away and be scared when you think you found something? In, in I hate all, that. In right. all fairness, though, Ronnie, <laughs> it goes this way. They're in the, in the company. They're in the company. They're, they're in it to make money. So and they know fear sells. Yeah. So what better yeah. way? Because there's a lot of people that they believe instantly that there's some kind of spirit or whatever. Yeah. So yes, they are going to sell that. And I love how Kevin is and his crew are going at it because, yes, because this that's going to sell now. Yes, it needs to get more real. That is what that's what I think the future is is real. But if you look yeah. at, if you look at real though, also, <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not I'm not going to say that this is going to happen to you guys, but it seems like the more honest and real you are in this field, the less people take you serious. Because they're all about the evil and demonic and, you know, that's just to me how it seems. If you see people posting stuff that says evil, demon, entity, whatever, they're going to have the likes and ratings and followers. But if you're talking about scientifically doing something, people kind of be like, well, that's boring. (laughs) Yeah, and all the demonic is all just show oh (laughs) absolutely that's very very rare yeah absolutely exactly yeah so that's what i'm what i can't wait to see with with your stuff is because that's going to be a game changer so you're going to have normal real life stuff going on that people like me will definitely relate to and it's Mm going to show people a different side of the places, the history, uh, all that. Absolutely. How to investigate. Yeah. So it, it's it can be completely different because, like I like I said and you said, you know, I'm not huge on things with lots of blinky lights and things like that. I think it just gets in the way uh, for what I'm looking. I'm looking for more environmental changes and correct. Yeah. Yep. And and we're looking for uh, elements in the earth and the wind barometric pressures. I think that yeah. is uh, uh, awesome. No, I'm not saying that, you know, uh Mel meter couldn't pick up a spirit because obviously it's, you know, a spirit is energy. So, but it's just very sensitive. Uh, it's a very sensitive device. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the difference between like when people say ghost hunting and people say paranormal investigating. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, the word yeah. hunting is, you know, going out and searching for something. Yes. So you're yeah. going out and you're looking for spirits or whatever, however you may find them. Investigating, you're trying to figure out what's going on. Why is this location haunted? What is haunting this location? What is the history of this location to cause it to be haunted? Yep. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Whoop, whoop. Because that, that, you is, gold star. that is exactly <laughs> what it is. I say paranormal investigator, but if I see people, you know, hyping something that's a piece of dust and it looks like it has a face <laughs> yeah. in it, uh, you yeah. know, then I call them ghost hunters because that's basically. It's like if you want to go out and investigate or look into a place and try to find ghosts, see if it's haunted, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Right. That's right. That's not what we're doing, but yeah. if that's what you want to do, well, go I mean, for it. A lot of people do that at the pay-to-play places. They, they go because yeah. they, they want to have fun. And, you know, if you're there with a whole lot of people, you're not going to be able to get good evidence. It's going to be contaminated like crazy because all the people and right. all the activity. And, you yeah. know, I mean, that's fun. I like doing stuff like that, too. That's great. But Oh, yeah. I go to events all the time. I love going to them. I love seeing the locations. Yeah. I like yes. meeting a lot of new people, people. that's there. I've made a lot of great connections through you know, some of these uh, events at these bigger locations. And it's it's a cool way to get in and get to see the locations and learn a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. But that isn't the place you would go to become a paranormal investigator. Because right, you couldn't really sit down and focus on, you know, collecting hard evidence. And, I mean, unless, you know, I'm not saying it can't happen, but... Unless you, you, you rented the whole place out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you would you have to rent, rent, rent the whole place out and they, you can afford that, then... That would be wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, really, if if we're at Penhurst and we're on the third floor and you're on the second 
and someone drops a, uh, you know, I'm going to think to myself, oh, wait, we just got a, you know, a we ghost. We just got a door slam. <laughs> <laughs> but in actuality, it was you guys down on the, the bottom floor. So that's, to me, if, if you're going to do a place, you have to have complete, Yeah. you have to have the complete thing. Yeah, you have to know where people are. And yes. Like I said, mark, constantly mark stuff. I mean, yep. There's been times where I'd be going around on a solo session, walk into a room just to peek in there and then realize there's a recorder there and be like, oops, I don't know if I made any noise. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, Kevin's in the room. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And, and mark, that, mark the recorder. Anything and, in the last three minutes was me. And that's great because you, you're with your guys. So you know how many people are there. And where each person can be. So, right. but at a, at a regular, we go to Penhurst and it's a, you know, there's 12 people that paid to investigate. We don't know where any of them people are. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I, I'm, I'm definitely extremely stoked about that because this is what we need. We need more shows, real shows that shows you what's yes. going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you'll you're really gonna enjoy it for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. And when the episodes come out on whatever network, will they be? You can watch one, and then you gotta wait a week to see the next one, or will they all be there so we can binge? That just <laughs> depends on how the network decides to put them out. Oh, okay. Well, I'm hoping for the binge. <laughs> <laughs> I kind I kind of like like give me see all of season one, and then you can start doing. Yeah. Season two yeah, in, in, yeah. in spurts because I, I, I like to, especially once I latch on to a show, then I'm like, yes, I got to. And then you want the anticipation. You're like, oh, it's over. Now I got to wait. I know. And then you want that build up. Right. Yeah, I think a lot like of that, that depends this. on. I think a lot of that depends on if it goes to a channel or a streaming service. True. True. Now, I know yeah. T&E in Canada where it's going to um, premiere October 6th. I know that'll be coming out weekly. Okay. And, well, uh. We'll be uh, kicking off their Creep Week, which is kind of their highlight to Halloween. Well, what do you think of like uh, Dakota and them? They they have like now they have their own YouTube. Yeah, they've thing. got a YouTube. I have not seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't either. I've seen bits and pieces, but, but I it's seen uh, it I guess subscription based for for their stuff. They'll put some stuff out there, but yeah. I guess it's subscription based, and I think it's a, it's a very good idea. I mean, networks now they're. I don't want to say they're greedy, but they're greedy. You know, they want that money. Yeah. So, and to be honest with you, I don't really know much about how the whole YouTube thing works. Oh, um, I don't. I don't either. Yeah, that's kind of. It's never a really looked into that part. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they they did the right thing because they they were dropped from Discovery Plus. I believe it was Discovery I Plus. Think so yeah. And hey, they wanted to keep going, and they're filmmakers, so. What better way than to do your own channel where you can control what, yeah, what you're they doing? Yeah, they can control like yeah. what you guys are doing. Yep, yeah. just like you are. <clears throat> Which is awesome. Maybe a lot more teams need to do that now. Yes, yes. Well, this is this is going to be the breaker right here. This is going to be the one that's going to put it on the map. That's right. And then you're going you, <laughs> to you, – hopefully we stop seeing, you know – Everything in this house is a demon, you know. And we, <laughs> right. And we start going to, you know, this is what it really is. That start changing people's minds because yes. I see, yeah. I, I, and I hate using the word blind believer, but I, I see so many people that just they want to believe it so badly that no matter what it is, that's going to be a ghost, and you can't tell them anything different. Right, right, yep. right. Yeah, I've, I've ran into them kind of people. It's like I've been sending videos to where it's obviously. You know, like a mist or something going in front of a, a rain going in front of an outdoor security camera, and they just think it's a thousand spirits trying to enter their house. Right, right. Like, or, Ed, no, no, no. That, that's <laughs> no, right. No. Or when you when you snap a picture at nighttime and you get the little orbs, you know, that could be moisture or you know, mm-hmm. it could be pollen that's floating. Could be through. a lightning bug. Could be anything. Yeah, that, but they want to believe it so badly. Yeah, it's like a flash reflects off of that stuff. Oh my goodness, yes. And you can get hundreds of of different <clears throat> orbs in the same picture, and people's like, "Oh my god, look at all these!" You know. And the, the ones that fascinate me the most is when they say, "Do you see that little orb there? That's got a face in it." And I'm thinking to myself, "If you was dead, <laughs> would you, would you want to come back as a little speck of something with a face? I mean, come on." <laughs> no, man. <laughs> hey, what I caught I caught a weird something a while back that. If, when I first saw it, I was like, holy cow, look at that. And then it ended up being nothing. 
but I was investigating this kind of restaurant bar area and it was during COVID when they had, you know, plexiglass everywhere. Oh yeah. And I had an IR camera set up and I caught what looked like an apparition walk through the back of the restaurant. Oh. And once I got to looking at it, the way the camera was angled, it was actually my reflection reflecting off a piece of plexiglass <laughs> that was down at the end of the restaurant. And it was just a perfect apparition of me walking across the back of the restaurant. Oh, wow. Oh, you were haunting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, but and I actually posted that at the time. I said, this looks like a legitimate you know, apparition, but it's not. This is my reflection yeah. in a piece of plexiglass that I didn't even realize was there at the time. I would yes. have posted and said, what do you think this is? Just to see what everybody says. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like, it's a demon, it's evil. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> it's your doppelganger. <laughs> you, yeah, it's your doppelganger. It looks an awful lot like you, Kevin. I think it's your doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you, when you catch stuff, you just got to really look at it, analyze it. Um, that's why, you know, even when you do an initial walkthrough, it's good to, you know, videotape that walkthrough. Because yes. you're like, you know, in the dark, you're like, was something in that corner? What what was over there? Yes. You know, if you have in daytime, you can see, okay, that could have been this. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. that's a reflection of this thing that's hanging on this pillar. Yes. Yes. And, and that's, so it's good to kind of do that in the daytime just to have it on video. Yeah, that's a good idea. Absolutely. And more people need to do that. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, you just, you know, people are mm-hmm. like, hey, we're going to investigate this place tonight. But they didn't do any walkthroughs. And now their whole stuff is just... Nothing, unless they can go in there during the day and and then go and back get, over. And if you get busy and don't get to go through your footage till like a week or two later, you're going to forget what was there. Yes. That's yes. true. That's true. <clears throat> so, I mean, even if you could go back the next day or the next day after, just do a walkthrough so that you can compare anything. Because mm-hmm. Ronnie have, uh, and I have seen things. Uh, we had taken a picture and there was a, a window there. But it actually looked like there was something in it, and mm-hmm. we had to walk back a little bit and be like, "What? What was that?" You know. Yeah. And and then we found out that's what it was. It was just a reflection, and I can't remember. I think it was a lamp. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, yeah. In your mom's garage. Yeah. I remember that. Yep. And then it's also good practice. You know, if you do go somewhere and you catch something, you know, if you can get back to the same place, try to recreate that and see if you can recreate what you caught to see if it was actual actually something legitimate or if it is something that can be easily debunked yes yes that's a good idea i i think that uh you know some of the things that that i've seen and you've seen and ronnie and and many many other people um i know that sometimes if if you go back and you recreate it and use a different perspective at it and find out, hey, oh, look, this was something that wasn't paranormal. And because I believe paranormal is plausible, I, mm-hmm. I'll, ne- I'll never say that it is positively proven because it's not. Right. Unless we could all be taken, you know, if we could all be dead and go to a place to see what it's like and then all come back and then we know. But I, I give it way plausible. I say everything's plausible. Because that is possible. Absolutely. So now let me ask this question. And I'm sure that you probably had some weird stuff happen. Uh, stuff that just falls over, falls off of a bar maybe or off a table. What kind of things do you experience like that? I mean, it just it's one of those things you have to look at each incident kind of individually. You know, what what could have caused this to fall? You know, something slides off a bar. Was there any condensation on it that would cause it to slide? You know, was it sitting off of a shelf kind of weird? Um, you know, you just kind of look at it, have to look at each thing and really investigate that claim and what could have happened, what could have caused something to fall. Um, back before we did the series, Brandon and I were um, at the Warner Grand Theater in San Pedro, California, um, doing an event with a... <coughs> with a uh, YouTube person and um, there was this roll of linoleum leaning against the wall on the stage it had been there. According to the worker there, it had been there for weeks and we're up in the projection booth looking down and that thing falls forward. 
And it's like a, I think he said it was a 110 or 120 pound roll of linoleum. Oh, wow. Just fell forward, bam, onto the stage, scared the crap out of us. We all jumped, ran down there to see, you know, what could have caused that. Nobody was on the stage at all. And, you know, going back and again, looking at the footage from before, it was leaning backwards against the wall. Right. So how this thing fell forward. Yeah. No that, idea. That's crazy. Yeah, that is no crazy. idea. And that was it. That was you said that was in California. Down. Yeah. And what did you say, Ronnie? So it would take a lot of energy. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It would. Yeah. And and that would be something like you could you could say, well, maybe there was like an earthquake or something. But how's it going to fall a forward? Tremor. Yeah, exactly. And we would have felt back. we would have felt that, and yeah. there would have been news yeah. reports of that the day after. Exactly. That's right. Not that yeah. day. And you could have explained it easily away. Because yeah. I mean, if it if it would something would shake it and it would slide down then okay but it fallen forward uh yep. i don't know about yeah. that one mm-hmm. <laughs> after it's been there for weeks exactly <laughs> now did you did you ever hear if there was like someone that passed there that was a a bigger person or well, i know that place has a history i've investigated that place oh, several times oh, okay all right yeah <clears throat> it's a great location to check out yeah, we see, you know, and talk to a lot of people. So we're always like, yes, we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to go there. Like, we need to win the lottery. Yeah. I'm so envious of you people. Y'all get to go to all these wonderful, awesome places. And we just get to talk about it. I don't mind talking about it, though. That, that, that to me, well, is just as, as important. The cool thing is, like, we uh, kind of reveal in season one, you don't have to have a big, well known place to have paranormal activity. Exactly. That's and a true. lot of these smaller, unknown places that we hit, especially in the first season, unbelievable results. I mean, we just, we caught some amazing things at some of these places. Heck yeah. And it's places that are, you know, easily affordable bed and breakfast. You can spend the night, yeah. get up and have a nice breakfast the next morning. I that, mean, that's what's up. <laughs> hey, well, we had some good meals on the, we had some good meals on that season. Heck yeah. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. That's what, uh, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be stuffing right? my face. <laughs> They'd be like, you hear, do you hear that? Well, that's just my stomach. That's my stomach. Sorry. <laughs> yep, every, every three or four minutes, marking the audio. Stomach. Stomach. <laughs> stomach. <laughs> yeah, because isn't it amazing how loud your stomach actually is on an audio I recording? Know. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everything's 20 times louder. <laughs> it's like I didn't. My stomach didn't make that noise. <laughs> like the whole, everybody in the universe would have heard that one. But <laughs> and it's weird, you know, you just sit around, and you just make certain noises and listen to it on the recorder and see how different it sounds. Yes. Yes. It's like, wow, that's, that was different. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you guys do lectures or anything where, where you talk about like uh, paranormal 101 type of things? Um, I haven't really done any lectures. I know Brandon has in the past. I think Mustafa may have done a few as well. But um, I'm sure we'll have some of that stuff coming up. Cool. Yeah, because, you know, you get – you're always going to have your your seasoned investigators. But you're going to also have those ones that they want to know, hey – what do you do to get this kind of result or things like that? And uh, yeah, and we're we're always open to questions. Yeah, yeah, that that's going to be good. So, how do you feel about people who really go by their own senses? You know, the sensitives and the empaths and whatnot, and like we just walk in and we we feel things and we just know things are going on. Do you give them any credit at all or credibility? You kind of have to fill them out. There are a lot out there that I don't believe are legit. Sure. Yes. Same. And there are some that I've been around that I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Mind blown. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And so I, th- I you just kind of kind of got to fill them out because, like I said, there's a lot of frauds out there. And then there are some that I honestly believe are legit. Yes. Yes. Same. Because that, that would be like if I was going to – you know, get someone on our team that, you know, not more, more than more empath. I, I'm not going to say empath because I'm empath. So it's um, someone that maybe can see older things and they can uh, get a good history of what it was. You know, they can yeah. tell you if someone was holding that thing and they died or whatnot. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be perfect mm-hmm. for like uh, a smaller places that you've never that is not well known that way they don't know 
the history of something. Like everybody knows like the history of these places now. Yeah. Yeah. So it it is getting very tough yeah. to find. I think there's a lot of great storytellers out there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ronnie. Knows, you know when you Ronnie take somebody knows. to a place that um you know they're not familiar with and they tell you things that you know that they shouldn't know. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I like you know, when that happens. Yes. How did you know that? Mhm. <laughs> uh, this is this is what I'm feeling. Well, you're 100% correct yep. from my research. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, I like that too. Yes, yep. me too. Because I mean, like like he was saying, I mean, you, there's there's a lot of a lot Lots, of people yeah. that they just they want to get on that show. Yes. <laughs> So mm-hmm. my five minutes of fame. Yes, but if <laughs> if there's a way that they can be screened so that you know they're legit. Yeah, they wouldn't know the history of this place, but you do, and yeah. you bring that person aboard and say, "Well, tell me what you feel." Yeah, you know that's yeah. That's why if I needed to find like a medium, I wouldn't just like go on Facebook and try to pick one out. I would have to go with someone that I've been around and I can um, that I find credible. Yes. Yes. For sure. Yeah, because I mean that's gonna that's how that's how shows they go bad right there. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Because yeah, now now as soon as they say something that's gonna be believed by the entire universe and <laughs> you know, then it's black to it's a demon and it's a- <laughs> Unfortunately that's the power that T V has. Yes. It, <laughs> it does. Yeah, the internet's the same way. I can't watch oh, yeah. those shows. I can't get through five minutes of them shows. I can't. I like Amy and Adam's show. I know I'm going to like your show. But, yeah, there's not many that I can watch that I just get completely bored in the first five minutes. And I'm like, can we watch Walking Dead? Or- oh, right, cause- I like a lot of them <laughs> when they first came out. I mean, one of my favorite ones starting off was uh, Paranormal State. Yes. Yes. Ryan, I, I don't know what, what all happened to that whole crew. But besides them, uh, Paranormal State was a good – that was a good – thing i used to watch it all the time yeah i think i have the first five seasons on dvd is yeah. it still on uh I, i'm sure you could probably go back and find uh, it. i'm thinking it was on discovery plus there for a little while yeah. i'm not sure if it still is i'll have to go look for it yeah because i mean they started out the same i mean they they all start out where they are looking for something they're looking right. to validate something and then whatever happens, <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know if if uh, uh, Ryan and them went through that kind of thing, or if they kind of stayed. Um, hey, you know, this is how we want to do it, and we're not going to be bought. You know? Yeah, so, I'm not. I'm not sure what all went on with that. Yeah. So, but yes, that's that was a good show. And and Kindred Spirits, I love Kindred Spirits just yeah. because the, there are a lot of history. They want the history. They want to know that when they go into this place, that's not a thought form that they're dealing with, and that it is supposed to be there. Yeah, they don't go running away when they get startled. They're not over dramatic. Yeah, just, they're not. They're not. I right. like them. <laughs> I like them. I respect them. They don't hear something and they scream and run out the building. Yeah, I, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which which I'm really like, aren't you do? Don't you get paid to have the show to do that? Like, stop. I mean, a paranormal <laughs> investigator, you're not going to see them run out the building. <laughs> you know, it's just not how Jeez. it works. I mean, you you can get startled and you can get scared. There's nothing right. wrong with that. But I've never. But it, not every single time the producer tells them to, honey. Yeah, like, my, <laughs> <laughs> my in, in my 20 years of, of researching the paranormal, I've, I don't think I've ever run out of a building ever. <laughs> so, I don't believe I have either. <laughs> so because I want to know what it was, you know, right? right. So, someone's like, "Hey, I got this scratching on, uh, on my wall," you know, and you can hear it all the time. And I'm, you know, let's let's investigate and find out. You know, there's a mouse in the wall. Yeah. But somebody, yeah. but somebody else that comes in there that don't know these different things will be like, "Oh, it's a demon." It's you a know. demon. <laughs> So, there was three scratch marks. <laughs> Look at did my you, arm. Did you hear the three scratches? That's a demon. <laughs> the but, power of Christ. Yeah, you. That's right. But it sells, and that's the thing. Yep. And, and and we know that. And that's why I'm I'm so looking forward to your your shows here yep. because I, I we need to see something uh on its own, cutting edge. That's real. Yes, and yours is going to be like that. That's what, from what it sounds like, and what you're telling me, yours is going to be kind of all on its own, because uh, it's not following in uh, 
some of these other <laughs> TV shows that I'm not going to name. Right. <laughs> I just, I'm plum excited. I can't wait. Yeah, me too. Me too. If you I haven't seen wait. the uh, if you haven't seen the season one trailer, it's on our uh, Hunter Discovery's Facebook page. Yes, I just Yay. I was just there. I was going to watch that with her here as soon yep. as we're done. But oh yeah. So tell me, uh, you, you see yourself going uh, with Haunted Discoveries now for for quite a while, correct? Yeah, yeah. So you're you're you guys are set with the paranormal. That's kind of our uh, goal right now, and it's kind of what we're pushing towards in the moment. Yay. Good, good. Now, do you still are you still making like uh, sappy Christmas movies and things like that? Yeah. So the company I work for, we actually do. We've been doing quite a few movies. Um, they've actually pretty well pulled me off of the movies to focus primarily on the paranormal stuff. Oh wow, wow! <clears throat> so like we have another movie filming right now. It's actually more of a uh, kind of thriller horror movie that one of our other uh, producers is doing. And then, um, like I said, I'm not really involved in that one. I'm focusing on prepping our Haunted Discovery spinoff series. Yeah. Yes. You yes. Could do a paranormal Christmas movie. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> there we go. I go mean, Christmas <laughs> it'd be like a Krampus love story type. Ghost of Christmas. Ghost past, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have some. Uh, shows up, like they have some other series that they're doing as well. But uh, like I said, I haven't been involved in those really. I'm prim- primarily focused on, you know, the paranormal stuff. Yeah. Cool. Because <laughs> even you know, after we finish and after I finish wrapping out the project, and we still have hours and hours and hours of control camera footage to go through and stuff like that. So I kind of focus on, you know, helping Brandon go through that stuff for the edits and, uh, yeah. you know, cause we go through every single clip. Yeah. Right. And are y'all still out there in, um, Louisville living out there? Um, myself and Brandon both live in Louisville. Mustafa's is in New Jersey and Malia's in uh, Pasadena. Oh, California. nice. Okay. Wow. She's We're kind of scattered out, out a little bit. You are. <laughs> so how long does it take to, to record, like, uh, let's say if you was going to go to Velisca or something at the Axe Murder House, how long does it take to film? Because uh, I know, how long is one of your episodes? 45 minutes or so? Yeah, roughly. How long does it take to film to get 45 minutes? I mean, usually a couple days. Yeah, that's what I figured. You know, because we usually work 12-hour days, 12-and-a-half-hour days. Wow. See, it don't wow. take no 28 days. <laughs> just yeah. I, I don't buy that you know it <laughs> don't take 28 days to figure out a, a haunting <laughs> but no i was just very curious because I, I know that it's time consuming you have to go in there you set up everything everybody's got to be accounted for it's like you said you you don't want to get uh bad um you don't want to hear somebody's coughing from one room to another. So, right, yeah, right. very time consuming. And do you do any of the editing, like uh, with whatever your post edits or whatever? No, Brandon does all that. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we yeah. got Brandon on scene, don't we? Uh, yeah, he's coming on here in a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, cool. So yeah, it'll be <laughs> good to get get his side too. I love I love yeah. talking to to you guys. This is. This, is, this makes my my day here when I get to sit down with good people and and hear what's going on your stories and yep yeah yep what, what, nice sitting here talking about the paranormal listening to the thunder outside oh yeah, that's yeah. right I wish we was having some I thunder know, right? I'm get that jealous. ambience going a little bit of lightning flash <laughs> we're we're in the dark so I mean <laughs> yeah we are sitting in the dark <laughs> it's almost dark here it's 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 getting there <laughs> and you're yeah you're in Kentucky yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're, we have just a little bit. You, you can still see a little bit out yeah, there. just a little. Before long, the lightning bugs will come out. So let me ask you a question as far as podcasts go. Do you like being on ones like this recorded that are audio only, or do you like the live ones? What's your favorite? Honestly, to me, it doesn't really matter. I just like getting in with good people and just talking and carrying on, telling stories and Cool. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter to me really which way it is as long as you have, you know, good conversation. Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool beans. And, and I see, I see like uh, there's, there's a mix. Uh, when we talk to people, sometimes they, they don't want to do 
alive. <laughs> I don't know if they get scared or what, but we're we're going to be scared. We're going to be moving into life. Well, she just she it takes her two hours to get ready. So, Whatever. You know. <laughs> you know me, I just I'm Bite good. My you know. butt. And if I ain't looking good, I'll throw a hat on. I'm still good. Yep. <laughs> it's but, different you know, for me. Girls, they got to you know Whatever. get their hair off. You like it. Put their perfume on. What are you putting I like perfume, my perfume on? Perfume on for a freaking podcast. <laughs> Goober. He's a goober. Feel the love. Feel the love. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I, Kevin, I thank you so much for being a part of our show tonight. And I had such a blast talking with you. Yeah. And, and I learned so much. And uh, I... I I can't wait to possibly have you on again to see where you're at and yeah, maybe where you've after come we from. See you some know. of the show and For get sure. you back yeah. on and talk about it and whatnot. Yeah, That'd because be wonderful. I, you know most people just continue to get better and better and better and better. So I mean, your stuff is is probably just going to keep blowing our minds. Yes, I can't wait, dude. Can't I wait. hope so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, we can come back on after it airs and. Kind of break down some of the episodes and go through things. And- yes, that'd yes, be awesome. that would we be. We might even be doing it on camera then. Yes, yeah, because we're we're, we're getting ready bit. to change over to <laughs> to lives. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. So yeah, check out the trailer, see what you think, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll you know, kind sure. of give you an idea where we're going with everything, and then uh, seems like each season's getting a little bit better. So Yay. awesome! That's, That's awesome. awesome. I'm excited for you. I hope you guys keep doing this for a long time. Yes. Me too, me too. <laughs> yes, we need we need more real real people stuff. Yes, real and, investigators. And, and not this, you know, the the company needs more money, so let's make more right. yeah, let's more be dramatic evil and stuff. run through the building screaming. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, Kevin, thank you so much again for, for being on and well, thanks uh, for having me. I, I, I wish you the best in everything you do and uh looking forward to talking to you again. Yep. Talk Sounds to good, you sir. soon, dude. All right. Peace. Have a good night. All right, you as well. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Hey, thanks for tuning in with us tonight, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow to receive notifications when new content from Paranormally Podcast is made available. If you believe you have something paranormal happening in your home or business, or you believe you may have witnessed a UFO or UAP, please send us your story, your photos, videos, questions, suggestions, and your comments to paranormallypodcast at gmail.com. You can also visit us at www.paranomalypodcast.com for more content and information, including all our social links. Hey, thanks again for watching and listening, and I hope that you tune in for next week's episode of Paranomaly. Hey, a word of caution. Paranomaly Podcast and its affiliates or hosts do not verify or check the validity of any person, team, or its members. Paranomaly Podcast highly advises that you proceed with caution when contacting any person or team before allowing them and having them into your home or business. A legit paranormal research and investigation team will never charge you a fee to investigate your home or business. They do, however... Accept donations to help further the research and investigations if you so choose to do so. All right. Thanks, everybody.